Assalamu alaikum. With Muharram and Safar just having passed us, most of you have probably realized that the world of poetry is deeply intertwined with the Ahlul Bayt and particularly Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. In fact, we have numerous narrations that discuss the merits of reading and writing poetry for Ahlul Bayt, but some people question is it really the best way to go about spreading the message of Imam Hussein? Are there any better methods and what impact does poetry really have on the people that hear and write it and read it? So I'm here today at SOAS, School of Oriental and African Studies, where the Ethelbate Society here is hosting an event called Revolution 72, which is an evening um, filled with poetry from various poets, which is all inspired by Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And throughout the evening, I'll be following the reciters and the poets as they prepare and perform to the audience tonight, inshallah. Back to the mashing, crashing, impact to percussion, the lyrical hum of tongues that reap and hum to the sound of celestial drums, reminding me to keep my heart strong. Immune from greed, shun what I want, chase what I need, speak struggle so fluent, it's a PhD since the first day that I wept to breathe. Nostalgia kicked in for the womb of my mother, made apparent via lungs that blew and shuddered them when I learnt tongues. I simply uttered, the stressed are blessed. In a life examined, some call it a test. Begin from the end and an end from beginning. Begin with no end and that's when you're winning. Forget the beginning, I call that sinning. So forget to forget, live not to regret the pain you endure for the pain of reality. Look at the words in this analogy, derived from a light that is sent from above to unite with a prophet that's shining bright. Become his mirror, deflect the shaitan. Let's get nearer to the maker, the one we are all his children in creation. Yet we act so lost that we need persuasion. Worshipping idols and worshipping nations. And whilst we worship one another, the real worship hastens. And our leaders are worshipping debt. Celebrities worship aliens. And we worship their trends. That's just some of our failures. And you know the list could go on. It's not the point of this song. It's to make you think about what you're on and what you want to be. As for me, I represent on the D. Growing up, um, I had a lot of stories about Imam Hussein. And um, as I got older, um, I started to appreciate the, the more human uh, elements of the story. And uh, in, in the kind of poetry that I do, is I tried to capture the, the human experience. Um, and so, I tried to um, put some of that to work with regards to Imam Hussein, trying to um, convey some of the feelings and emotions and the sort of existential aspects of um, Imam Hussein's uh, story. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is uh, Ali Fadl. I'm 23 years old. I am currently undergoing a postgraduate degree in Islamic studies. My name is uh, Sajjad Jaffa and I'm an English reciter of poetry. My name is Nuri Sada and I'm here to read poetry, inshallah. My name is Sana. I'm better known as Sanasina through my poetry. My name is Tar Adil and uh, my talent is poetry. I've been reciting poetry for the last couple of years. Been writing, uh, writing since I was 16. Uh, started writing poetry on a Islamic forum called CYC. And that's where I uh, said that I was quite good at writing poetry. What makes you want to recite or write poetry about Imam Hussein in general? Uh, I'm not exactly a writer of poetry, I'm more of a reciter of poetry. Uh, I just think that um, poetry recitation sort of adds another dimension uh, to your conventional programs such as the majalis and the seminars and the conferences. Uh, that's why with the poetry recitation I, I look to invoke certain emotions and feelings within the, the, the receiver. Um, and that's why we do that with using voice and tone 
the melody and the words. I think it's a form of expressing, you know, your emotion. I've loved to, to sing from a very young age, and I think you know, reciting for religion, you know, I think is something that's very important. Everyone has a talent, has a passion, has a pastime that they enjoy. With me personally, it's more reading and writing. The reason I personally enjoy poetry is because it allows me to use that talent and play around with it and experiment with it in a very beautiful way. Uh, and I love the way, personally, I love the way that you can uh, weld words as to play with people's minds and play with people's emotions and feelings. So that's essentially the reason why I uh, enjoy this talent. I guess for me, writing was just something I picked up at a young age and I stuck with. Um, initially, I never, I never used to recite, but it's, it's been years since I started with, um, reading in public. And um, I guess I just wanted to share my work after like years of writing to myself kind of thing. Um, it's just a way of expression. You know, it's just different things people do to express themselves. And I think language and uh, communication is a way of putting that across. Tonight you spoke about Mount Hussein. Um, what in particular made you choose Mount Hussein as the topic of your poem for tonight? I think Imam Hussein, the reason I, choose, I chose Imam Hussein as a, a, a topic for my poem is that I believe that his message is a very, very vital and important one. I believe that the day of Ashura has many lessons that stem from it that can be used, many different lessons that can be used uh, by non-Muslims, by Muslims, by anyone in the world. I believe that the, the lessons that, that happened on that day, the lessons that were taught on that day can be related to by anyone. And I believe that's very important to forward this message toward uh, the wider world. And I think that poetry is a beautiful way to forward this message because it's not the, like you know lectures where uh, you sit down and you have to Take it, take it, take it in very, you know, systematically. Poetry is very beautiful. I think, in regard to it being such a huge historical event, you know, the event that saved our religion. I think, from a religious point of view, that is one of the biggest things that you can write about. I think his his in, the entire message, the entire story, of standing up to oppression, standing up to tyranny, is prevailing throughout the whole world. Well, to be honest, Imam Hussein is a new figure in my life. Um, I mean, it's something that I don't like to say, but I've been, I've been a Muslim for, for all my life, but only recently I've found the, the path of Ahlul Bayt. And um, <coughs> so for that reason, um, I don't really have as much poetry on Imam Hussein as the other reciters did. But um, why anyone would write on Imam, Imam Hussein is pretty simple, I guess. It's, he's just, um, he's the epitome of the brave and uh, the symbol of justified revolution, I guess. I chose today to write about Mount Hussein because he's uh, the pillar of emotive description and I feel like uh, uh, the strongest of my poetry has been about Mount Hussein so it's fitting that I um, wrote about him and recited about him today. Well, I mean Hussein, not only, I mean obviously I was brought up being a Muslim, being a Shia Muslim but I, I guess it's more the understanding of what Hussein stood for uh, on the day of Ashura, of course, I can go into many lessons, you know, the many lessons that he stood for, justice, you know, patience. But why I, would, why I want to recite, it's because it's, I, I, it's something that God's given me, so I, I can use whatever I, whatever I can in the way of serving Imam Hussein I guess, I guess the most important thing is serving. You know, everyone has their own way of serving Imam Hussein. I guess this is probably my own way of, uh, of being able to serve the visitors of Imam Hussein, the followers of Imam Hussein, and Imam Hussein himself. And our next act is Brother Ali Fadil. Um, Brother Ali Fadil, for those of you who don't know, well, <laughs> if you don't know, then you're a rare breed as well, um, is someone who takes the traditional Arab style of reciting the eulogy and uses modern poetry. And it's a, it's a rare breed and a rare kind of uh, breed of poetry. Revolutions by this name This is called love of Hussein Revolutions by this name This is called love of Hussein My next poem inshallah will be from Nuri Sardar as you've heard before When the Lord created the foundations of the universe, Jibra'il with a shining light would always sit and converse. Who are you? O oh, light of the world, you've existed since its birth. He answers, I am the light of Quran, both chapter and verse. He replies, I am Hussein. This is called love of Hussein. 
He replies, I am Hussein. This is called love of Hussein. With his birth to his mother, oppressors cried in agony, whilst patience welcomed him. And with the truth and sincerity, the shadow of the world around this light he lit up truly. Why else would the sky and the earth cry blood with his tragedy? Why else would the sky and the earth cry blood with his tragedy? When they fall, his name remains. This is called love of Hussein. When they fall, his name remains. This is called love of Hussein. Indeed, Hussein, in God's mercy, is the ark of salvation. Indeed, Hussein. In God's mercy is the ark of salvation. He cares for those who board his ship like a carer of orphans. He is the sign of every stand against every oppression. Cries of the oppressed uprising mimic his revolution. Cries of the oppressed uprising mimic his revolution. This is God's mercy in aim. This is called love of Hussein. This is God's mercy and aim. This is called love of Hussein. The greatness of Hussein cannot be illustrated in words. The greatness of Hussein cannot be illustrated in words. A king with such humility like him is simply unheard. A king with such humility like him is simply unheard. A warrior yet so graceful, where he described like a bird. This bird's young is his religion and its safety is nurtured. This bird's young is his religion and its safety is nurtured. His nest would be a hell of a bait. This is called love of Hussein. His nest would be a hell of a Bait. This is called love of Hussein. As nations fall and rise with times, Hussein's message never dies. As nations fall and rise with times, Hussein's message never dies. His name is heard in every age, and this way he is alive. His name is heard in every age, and this way he is alive. In, ignor in ignorance, our enemies, our beloved Imam, deny. In, ign in ignorance, our enemies, our beloved Imam, deny. What do they know? What do they have when for a thousand years for him we have cried? What do they have for when a thousand years for him we have cried? Who has lost and who shall gain? This is called love of Hussein. Who has lost and who shall gain? This is called love of Hussein. Understand, with the blood of Hussein, revolutions are raised. Understand, with the blood of Hussein, revolutions are raised. No matter how much we're oppressed, his name is forever praised. No matter how much we're oppressed, no matter how much we're oppressed, his name is forever praised. When Hussein's love was brought to us, into its eyes we all gazed. When Hussein's love was brought to us, into its eyes we all gazed. And thank the Lord for blessing us with such a light within our days. And thank the Lord for blessing us with such a light within our days. Can his lovers be ashamed? This is called love of Hussein. Can his lovers be ashamed? This is called love of Hussein. Hussein's banner we raise, a banner of justice and hope. Hussein's banner, we raise a banner of justice and hope. Where it blows with it, the wind blows, it levels a mountain's slope. A letter of oath we've signed with our blood as patience can't cope and delivered it to its door, our wails, its envelope. We've sent it and sealed our names. This is called love of Hussein. We've sent it and sealed our names. This is called love of Hussein. Hussein is a heart not understood by the greatest of minds. Hussein is a heart not understood by the greatest of minds. This undying flame can never be explained nor defined. 
Hussein is a heart not understood by the greatest of minds. This undying flame can never be explained nor be defined. He lives the lives of his lovers to all dust under his feet they've signed. The lives of his lovers to all dust under his feet they have signed. Yet still he deserves more, the prince of heaven and of mankind. Yet still he deserves more, the prince of heaven and of mankind. And death it returns again. This is called love of Hussein. And death it returns again. This is called love of Hussein. Do you think Mam Hussein can be understood through poetry? I think that Mohsin can be understood through poetry because I believe that his lessons and his essence is transient of time, is transient of religion, and is transient of you know systematic ways to forward his message. And I think that this is a very beautiful way to bring people in to understand Imam Hussein. Because today, for example, in the crowd there are a lot of non-Muslims, and in fact, after I read, I was told by a non-Muslim, uh, your poetry is very beautiful. And I think that it's it's a beautiful way to guide because. I think that people don't like to be told what to believe. I think if you sit down in a lecture or sit down and, and, and forward him your beliefs, I think when you read poetry, it's, it's nice because it's very subtle. You're not telling them what to believe. You're putting it out there in a way that's very subtle. Definitely. I think, I think he has been throughout the last 1400 years, you know, through whichever language it's been in, you know, Arabic, Farsi, Urdu. And I think English is, is the next step, you know, bringing it, I guess, to the West. It's very difficult because with poetry, I'm sure poets have mentioned this before, with poetry, it's, it's like painting a, a picture, as in an, uh, an artist will never be satisfied with what he's drawn. Um, it's the same thing, definitely the same thing with poetry, as in the more you write poetry, the more you think, uh, this, is, this doesn't do justice to the, to the actual person. Uh, I, I attempted to write, to, to write poetry today, uh, it was very difficult because you think that they're such the personalities are so are so magnanimous that you, you feel that these words can't exactly do justice to them. But then you have to put into a mindset that whatever you do is accepted um, by Allah or by Imam Hussein So um, I guess you can just you know freely do as you can and hopefully you'll be accepted. I, I think poetry is, is an important form of communication. Um, you know, I, it's one of the oldest forms of communication and we uh, really um, it's really vital to our existence so uh, you know seeing someone like Imam Hussein who's, who's as important as he is and his story uh, uh, as rich and um, you know, intense as it is I think poetry is definitely um, a form, uh, a suited form of expression to convey that. I think Imam Hussein can be understood through poetry. It's one of the strongest mediums uh, to understand Imam Hussein, uh, particularly being an emotional uh, medium as well. Of course, um, I mean, poetry is a, it's a beautiful way of interacting with others. Um, you can understand people through it, you can understand emotions through it. It's the only, I think it's the only form of um, speech that can, can affect people in such a way. I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been listening to stories and watching videos of Imam Hussein, but I think I've been mo most affected through poetry, you know, like eulogies that we're just hearing now, that they make me cry. Tell me you don't fear this endless love that grows ever more with pain and the sound of my breath as it whispers his name Hussein, Hussein, Hussein let me tell you the difference between your army and mine I see fear is what strengthens you while you see love in my eyes you see the love of Hussein, you feel the flames ignite tell me you don't fear this love you see burning inside see it's overtaking all logic it's overtaken all logic and all sense of the mind and I'm crazy in love and I'm willing to die. So come forth, my brother. I await my demise and tell me you don't fear this love that grows ever more with pain. And the sound of my breath as it whispers his name, Hussein, Hussein, Hussein. Brother, forget these swords and forget these spears. My eyes loaded with bullets and I will shoot these tears and I scream Ya Hussein till your eardrums are pierced and the echo echoes of his army penetrate the ears and what choice do you have? What choice do you have but to surrender and revere across the plains of Karbala as the purified ones are here and tell me my brother come forth, truth is near and join me in this endless love that grows ever more with pain and with the sound of your breath, whisper his name, Hussein, Hussein, Hussein. Thank you.
Do you think your poetry can relate to non-Muslims as well? My, my poetry kind of varies. I mean, I'm, I speak about political injustice more than um, Islamic, but I do, I do have like other personal poems that people that don't have to be Muslims can relate to. And um, the, the, the things I write about are basically um, conflicts in the Middle East and stuff. And to say, to say only Muslims will relate to that is kind of unfair because there's a lot of non-Muslims that are involved in these causes despite the same causes with us. Yeah, definitely, because um, the poetry that I recite, I sort of split it into, into two. One is very descriptive. And one is very, how would I say, uh, it's very deep thinking. Um, most of the poets or most of the people that are non-Muslim, uh, culturally they're, they're, they're associated with um, deep thinking poems, uh, which, you know, makes the mind think about the actual words rather than being, being told a story. So um, in terms of non-Muslims being able to understand, definitely, it's because Hussein's message, Hussein's message is universal. It's not, it's not specific to one uh, denomination of, of Islam. It's open to the whole of mankind. Um, again, because of the way that I'm writing, I'm trying to come back to the human experience. Um, I, that's why I think it's important to make it as universal as possible. So usually in my poems, um, I use um, terms that are Muslim specific or names of um, Muslim individuals, uh, of Imams or holy individuals. Um, I, I, I limit that because I want to try and convey the, the human experience. So it's got, sometimes um, it, it might just seem metaphorical when I'm referring to someone and therefore helps other people relate to it. I'd like to think so. I think, um, again, it's not quite um, Mahatma Gandhi's sayings or people like that, but I think there was an element of listening to someone that has stood up against oppression and hearing his sacrifice that he went through, I think, a kid. I think that non-Muslims can relate to my poetry because the pure fact that it's English. It's not just English, but you know, it's not, I wouldn't say it's Arabic translated into English or Farsi translated into English, it is pure English. Uh, English is obviously the biggest step to forwarding the message of Muhammad Islam because the whole world understands English. The whole world doesn't understand Arabic, the whole world doesn't understand Farsi, but English is a universal language, so it's a very beautiful way to forward the message of Muhammad Islam. And I think that forwarding this message in English means that it can get to much more people and the whole world in general. So I think, hopefully, that uh, what I try to do is make sure that the uh, non-Muslims that understand English can understand my poetry. I think my poetry can appeal to non-Muslims. I've written a couple of poems which have been targeted at non-Muslims in particular. Um, for sure, poetry is a medium that can target any kind of audience. Some people might argue that writing poetry about Mam Hussein, for example, or reciting poetry like this in public will promote sectarianism and divisions and disunity. Would you agree with that? To an extent, but at the end of the day, people have been... There are many, many philosophers and people that have been speaking about Imam Hussein over, over the years. Charles Dickens, Muhammad Gandhi, just a few of you know, the people that refer to it. So I, don't, I don't really think it brings about that much, to be honest. It's, it's, again, it's a very, very famous event in history which has taken place in both sects of religion, key sects of religion. It's a bit of a, a mucky issue, but I just, I, I just believe that politics and religion, of course, in this day and age, they do mix, but um, if people just try to understand the message that's, 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 that's being given, they will, they'll, 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 they'll see that there's no hatred, there's no you know, attack, there's no um, oppression or anything like that. The values that are being stood for within the poetry are all values universal to the whole of, the whole of mankind. I mean, values such as justice, values such as patience, you know, brotherhood, motherhood, friendship, all these values are encompassed within the message of, of Islam and the message of Ahl al-Bayt, and the message, specifically the message of Imam Hussein. So if people ha are ignorant or if people have different agendas, then they can always make, um, you know, uh, secretary of violence through, through, um, through their own way of understanding, put it that way. Simply, no, not at all. Because firstly, Imam Hussein, whether you are, um, whatever madhab you're from, like, in conclusion, he is, he is the grandson of the Prophet. And well, if you love the Prophet, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of everyone, all the Muslims do, then you have to respect and honour. It's, it's your obligation and duty to respect, honour and love Imam Hussein. So it's not, it's not a form of sectarian issue at all. I wouldn't agree. I think you'd have to be narrow-minded to think that poetry can uh, be taken as a, a sectarian uh, provocation. 
but it can you can write in a provocative manner but the poetry from our percent is not provocative or aggressive so it's a universal message it highlights universal morality and that's the message that we're trying to highlight today as well I strongly disagree with that because I don't, like I said before many times, I don't think Imam Hussein is bound by a religion or by a school of thought. I think it's very ignorant when people say, say that uh, if you, you know, people have this kind of uh, way of thinking and idea that if you love Imam Hussein, that means you're a Shia. If you more from Imam Hussein, that means you're a Shia. But Imam Hussein wasn't just for the Shia, and he, in fact, he wasn't even for the Muslims. He was for the whole world. That's why you find that a Christian person was alongside him when he died, in the, and, and and fought and died with him in the city of Karbala. In fact, there's a beautiful saying by Imam Hussein where he says, even if you do not have a religion, at least be free. Think, at least be free. At least be free thinking, basically. So I think that shows that Imam Hussein relates to everyone. And I think it's, I think it's very ignorant to say that Imam Hussein. Or speaking about Imam Hussein and speaking about the lessons and his message is promoting sectarianism. It depends. It depends what you're saying. I mean, anything could, you know, a talk, an interview, anything could promote sectarianism. Um, and you know, if we are being sectarian, then we have to ask ourselves why. You know, is this just, is this is this something that our Imam would have wanted us to do, or the Prophet, or anyone? And so we have to, we have to always try to. And that's why, again, coming back to the human experience, where it's not sectarian, it's something that everyone can relate to. And I think it's very important to, to make that clear. And once you approach, it depends where you're coming to someone. If you're coming to them from the human perspective, then you've broken down certain barriers. And you, it's, it's better to try and do it that way. Um, your poem tonight discussed a historical event. And um, I just want to ask, why do you think and how important do you think it is to keep repeating um, the narrations of the historical event and you know reciting these poems again and again. I think when you repeat something so much, it instills it within you know within yourself, within other people, and it brings brings people closer to it. You know, as in, I think we've been instilled throughout our lives and stuff like that con continuously. And I think it, it really brings about a strong connection. And again, like he's a man that has saved our religion. Without it, it would be something completely different today. I think that history. We can learn many lessons from history. I think it's very, very important to study history. Not just, I mean, obviously we come year after year in the morning of Hussein, that's what our religion teaches us to do. But religion aside, I think it's very, I think no one could disagree that it's very important to understand history. You can't just brush away history. Because brushing away history is, I think, I think there are so many lessons that, I think the beautiful thing is that history always repeats itself over time. When you study history, you see that history always continues to repeat itself. And I think that when you do study history, you see how to benefit from your life, the lessons that you learn in history. So you see what to do, what not to do. I think that's why it's very important to uh, study historical uh, concepts. And especially, of course, the message of Mahasin, as I said before, it has many lessons in it that can be learned from. So I think it's very important that this historical event is not forgotten. Because you can study it your whole life, but you'll never fully understand it. That's how deep and that's how beautiful it really is. Because if we, if we hadn't, for 1400 years, if we, if we hadn't done this every year, we wouldn't, there wouldn't be 15 million people expected to go on um, uh, Ziyara next year. It's, um, things like this have to be continuously um, remembered. Uh, last week I was performing at Genocide Memorial Day where they, um, they mentioned all the genocides that happened over, over history. And it's, it's important to remember those events to one, raise awareness and two, just keep um, kind of, by doing that you're, you're kind of retrieving the justice that these people deserve. I think, you know, it's important to learn history, it's important to know your history so you can know where you stand today, you can have an idea of where, where, where you're going in the future and, and therefore it's important to have a comprehensive view of history. So not only focusing on Imam Hussein, you know, having a very comprehensive understanding and trying to explore the different areas and just put across the lessons we learn from them and again the, the experiences that, pe that people had in the past and we, what we can learn from them. Um, repeating a uh, what happened in a historical event uh, tends to remind the people of the oppression. It ties with so much with our lives, with the messages that we see around us and the oppression that we see around us. So it's uh, very important that we repeat what has happened uh, to the Ahlul Bayt a thousand years ago now. It's because Hussein is a, a flame that will never be, um, Hussein is a flame that will never be distinguished. Yeah, uh, extinguished, sorry. Because the whole reason why we commemorate Imam Hussein year in, year out is to remember what he stood for and to remember that this person who only 60 years or 40 years prior to his demise he was in the lap of the person that brought the religion 
So, I mean, this in itself is worth looking into. I mean, we, that's why I remember. I mean, we, you, can, you, can look at, you can look at Imam Hussein from two different aspects, emotionally and intellectually. Intellectually, obviously, there's lessons you can learn, and emotionally, there's a spiritual attachment to Imam Hussein. I, uh, I do apologize for taking long on you. I have one more last poem which was written by myself, but please don't compare me to the poets before me. I am just a beginner, but um, hopefully, hopefully it goes well. They all lined up in front of the man. They all lined up in front of the man that they would sacrifice their lives for. Their undying love for him clear in the yearning smiles across their faces. One show of sacrifice on that day, and God blessed them with centuries of praise. One show of sacrifice on that day, and God blessed them with centuries of praise. Their names ringing in the minds of oppressors, the oppressed drew inspiration from them. They were not infallible. They were not infallible. They were not kinship. They were not royalty, and neither were they wealthy. They were not infallible, they were not kinship, they were not royalty and neither were they wealthy. They were men like you and I. They were men like you and I, hearts and mind, ears and eyes. They were men like you and I, hearts and mind, ears and eyes. Yet the difference between us is far and few. Yet the difference between us is far and few. For it is no coincidence that they were called Revolution 72. For it was no coincidence that they were called Revolution 72. Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm going to do a few pieces now, inshallah, about the story of Karbala. And we're going through parts of the story. So I'm going to start when the tents are on fire. Those familiar with the story will know that after the battle, the tents of the family of Imam Hussein and his companions were set alight by the enemy and then those companions and family members were chained and transported across the plains of Iraq to Syria and they were, um, then I'm going to wrap up talking about the aftermath of this so inshallah we're going to go on a bit of a journey with this Have you ever prayed with your enemy in sight Eyes open in the dark Trying to harness the light Battered and bruised from a cosmic fight Arms by your side as arrows fall to your feet Prostrating and you hear your brother gasping to breathe Angels resuscitating They can't bring him back Time of death? Nah There ain't no need for that These men still live and they inspire these tracks. They inspire my acts. They inspire my words. They inspire my dreams. They inspire my hallucinations. Or maybe I'm not hallucinating. When I hear a cry from the east and the pitch gets higher. See a tent that's blazing pitched in the fire. Now the cry is a scream and I can't ignore it. Woke from my dreams because I died when I saw it. It's not a nightmare. Just show me the way. I want to head right there. I swear. It's not a nightmare. It's just been a few days since I last went there. And now, they say I can't go there. Ripped up garments, ripped up ears. Now, they say I can't go there. Smoke filled lungs from the smoke filled air. Now, they're telling me I can't go there. They ain't ready for the scenes, too much despair. But we all know, we have to go there. So we can show our Lord, we shared their fear. I see a fire and a passion. In the belly of a beast, I just can't help clashing. The same beast that came and rode through the camp with a trail of flames. The same beast that claims those who weep for the family should be ashamed. The same beast that slain in the hearts of the pure, protected and saved. I make the beast wane when I raise my hand to the name of Hussein. I make the beast wane when I hand drop down as it beat for Hussein. 
Did you hear they set flames to the tent of the wife and child of Hussein? They set flames to the tent of the wife and child of Hussein. And the Prophet watches in pain. Most of his ummah are yet to complain. The Prophet watches in pain. Most of our ummah are yet to complain. And so it begins, the road to Sham. This road is long and full of grief. And I just want to join them and walk with them. And even though our souls will be chained, our arms and our bodies will be chained, our souls will be free. We stop somewhere for the night to get some respite. I lay my head down as my tears run dry. My heart beats off the shock between sighs. I'm trembling beneath the night sky. Retire as my dreams bathe in the moonlight. Mirages are welcome to help ease my sight. See his face covered in red, but to me it's dressed in white. Peace for a moment. Chains clang, hear a bang and a whip goes by. I'm stirred from my slumber, wondering why I look high. See his lips reciting the words of my Lord. They accord with his actions. Never inoffensive did he attack them. The sign of a real man, his family backed him. But he was concerned with more than his faction. Started a chain reaction, resonating until the very last day of creation. But before then, my aim is to break free from this road of calamity and spread his message till I meet his progeny. I'm drowned in the well of love for the heavenly. But a drink from the fount is my only remedy. Kofa, your son deserves plenty. I'm honored to have stood by his side, but I'm still here. Come to me tonight and whisper in my inner ear so I can break free from the chains within me and end this letter of love sincerely, filled full of faith, yours faithfully, from a follower of the faith of the free. And now they ask me, what is the aftermath of this massacre? I tell them, he drew a straight path back to the messenger. Split morals in half with a clear cut line. Follow his family plus the nine. It's a chain leading back to the grace of the divine. The way his face shined made them want to step back. Questioning whether or not they should attack. But they went forth and now they never look back. We all know the events of the inflicted terror, the severed palms of the flag bearer, the unquenchable thirst of the women and children, naked body, no hearse, not even a mention. In this cracked up world that we reside in, an infant girl never dries her eyes crying, whilst the enemies boast and they start to sing. Revenge has been sworn to the waiting king. 